make sure that you constantly stay involved with the process of distribution. So many filmmakers will sit back and hand their project over to a distributor thinking that they're going to take care of them and have the same type of enthusiasm about their project that they do. And they don't. It's just that something. They don't? Really? They don't. <laughs> 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 so you have to keep them accountable every step of the way. Welcome to Common Sense Mamita. I'm Lydia Nicole. And if it's your first time watching and you are interested in acting tips, showbiz insight, and life lessons, subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so you can get everything in real time. I am just giddy and tickled to death, not to death, but I'm tickled because I have one of my coolest friends here at the table with me. I have known him almost as long as I've been in California, which is almost 40 years. We started out around the same time and it is just so fantastic to see how his life has evolved and how he has evolved as an actor, as a producer, producer and my most favorite as cowboy because he's a cowboy people a real cowboy he ain't playing either <laughs> real cowboy so without further ado i would like to introduce you to the one the only mr reginald t dorsey welcome reggie Thank so you, good Lydia. to have you mm. Mwah, it's so good to have you it's a pleasure to be here so what did you learn when you started to produce as a producer that you did not know as an actor? Two things. Everybody wants your job and nobody knows what you do. Producing is is challenging in the sense that you pretty much do everything behind the camera for the director in terms of making sure that his vision is achieved and making sure that everything is done in a manner that's smooth where you're keeping everybody happy you know you're the puppet master i like to see it as the fireman right you right put out the fire there's that too yeah, that, yeah that's how i yeah i view uh producing right. it's like you're keeping everybody good you're mm -hmm. good everything's right, good right, right, right. you got to make that project move forward and yeah. if everybody's not good you're not good it only takes one that's person right. That's right. To make it not good. That's right. And you got to go, you got to snip them, snip them out. <laughs> oh, is that one? Come here, baby. Let's talk. Come on. It's quite a juggling act. Right. Those were two things that I, I really wasn't aware of before I started producing, you know. I'm like, so you want my job, but you don't know what I do. My first feature was a, uh, a project called Steppin', mm -hmm. and that pretty much taught me the game. You know, that's where I cut my teeth in. And did you act in that one as well? No, no, no. Okay. No. So in this one where you acted and produced, how did you switch hats? Because that can get, get a little tricky. I oh, think. man. I never slept the whole time we were working on uh, Kings of the Evening. And we shot it in Texas on location, right outside of Austin. I did as much homework as I could on the acting side before we started production due to the fact that I was just constantly involved with the project day to day as far as the uh, the integral aspects of it. I was just able to make that transition pretty smoothly. It was all about preparation. When you had to be in front of the camera to let go of what was happening behind the mm -hmm. camera. Uh, other than the director, did you have somebody else who you could rely on who was in your corner kind of helping you through? Not really. Okay. You know, um, like I said, I did as much preparation as I could possibly do. And when you're prepared, a lot of the little hiccups along the way don't become astronomical mm -hmm. because, you know, you've already pretty much... I won't say necessarily saw it coming, mm -hmm. but you were just ready for it. You know, I, I was pretty at ease throughout the transition. Preparation, again, is the mm -hmm. key, mm -hmm. you know, especially if you're trying to do both as an actor and as a producer. You know, I'm looking forward to doing it as a filmmaker as well as a director. You are keeping me on my toes, Lydia. I'm glad I can ask you the hard questions. <laughs> so, because, you know, that, that whole thing about ignorance is bliss, right. no, it is not. It is costly mm -hmm. painful and sometimes can end a career absolutely so take us through the process of what a producer does pretty much uh everything that the director needs to have done to keep a set mo moving smoothly you want to make sure that your crew is happy you want to make sure that your actors are happy you want to make sure that you have everything that you need in place by the time you get ready to start production basically you're the front line for any hiccups that happened along the way. I'd like to think that while the director has everything 
you know, to focus on in front of the camera, then we're the ones behind the camera that's keeping everything smoothly and focused on that. You're also overseeing the departments, Absolutely. the different departments, mm -hmm. and you're also the person in charge of hiring right, right, the right, departments. Right, 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 and making sure that, you know, everybody is on point. As producer, you did pre-production, production and, mm -hmm. and you handled post mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. absolutely so you took it from beginning to end right so what did you learn in post and then what did you learn in distribution because they're two <laughs> really complicated <laughs> steps yeah in yeah, making a yeah, movie yeah, yeah. or or you know any project right post was probably the weakest link for me because very few of us, even if we're making films, we, we don't really have access to that whole arena. Uh, I was able to gain a lot of knowledge, you know, going through post as far as your, your digital intermediates, you know, taking film from film and actually running it through a process where it becomes digitized and then back to film again. And just the whole color correction process, the titles and things of that nature. And, and it was cool. And you, know. you turned us on to, I produced Making the Five Heartbeats, and you turned us on to the best post house oh, thank you. in thank you. Los Angeles. Thank you. I love Gareth Cook. Right, right, right. He kicks Yes, the foundation. Yes. They were amazing, yeah, and yeah. that was because of you, because yeah. I was pulling my hair out, like, right. I'm going to do it. <laughs> and what makes it even better is that it's black-owned. Right. And, and he's so professional. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's one of the best in the yes. game. I've been working with them for a few years now. I really want to make sure that we have an avenue to post-production and quality post-production. It, it's been exciting to be a part of what they're doing over there as well. You know, a lot of people, again, like you said, you know, they they really don't know the process of what it takes to take a film through the whole process. But those guys, they are available yes. uh, and accessible. Yes. And, and what you don't know, they will definitely make sure that you yes. have the opportunity to learn. They're high end. They stand, they can stand toe to toe with any of the production, mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. any of the post houses. Mm -hmm. I mean, just yeah. superior. Yeah, just yeah. In and they streamline they, everything. Yes, yes. I mean, they can get it in and get it out. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I love them. I and, love them. And for me, that was one of the most exciting things about being a part of the, the foundation was that I could invite other filmmakers of color mm -hmm. in and let them know that they had a home. Because at the end of the day, that's really what it's all about, right. relationships. But it, it's also very generous of mm -hmm. you because, you know, a lot of times people find these... Uh, Golden nuggets. Go yes, and they don't want to share. Right, they right, will not... Right, oh, I'm right. sorry to hear that. And they keep right. going. <laughs> they go, hey, I can, I can make... I can lessen the load for yeah, you. I can yeah, make it yeah, easier. Yeah. But that's too bad, brother. That's too bad. <laughs> it speaks volumes of who you are in that you are just a generous artist, period. Not just in that area, but you've always been generous, which is wonderful to know people like mm -hmm. you and to see how the cowboy community is. There's a community within the black Hollywood mm -hmm that is really very supportive and generous. Mm -hmm. And I kind of started in that area right, right, first, right, right. going into the Latino mm -hmm, community. Mm -hmm. They were not so generous mm -hmm, with mm -hmm, me. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't right, want right. to let me play in their reindeer <laughs> games. I was like, what? I'm a nice person, what? Yeah. And it does make a difference. You right. know, we're, we're, we're fighting and we're struggling to put our our stake mm -hmm. on top mm -hmm. of the mountain. And it really does make a difference when you have a community who says, go, let's right, do, let's right, be, let's, right, you right. know. Let, and, and that's why I keep coming back to the cowboy community mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. that is what you guys do. You yeah. know, like I will hear stories about, oh, so and so's horse is sick. Right. Well, Oba showed up, right, right, or right, Glenn right, showed right, up, right, or right, Reggie right, showed right, up, right. or so, you know, it's like yeah. you guys rally together. And, and I'm, I'm glad that you noticed that because uh, there's so many things that can go wrong. Yes. When you're, you know, handling a 1,200-pound animal, you know, whether it's it's 
through medical issues or, you know, whether you're getting bucked off or, or whether you need a horse trained or things of that nature. So we have to depend on each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really appreciate you acknowledging that, you know, oh, that, yeah. that, that you've been a witness to oh, that. Oh, it's not only encouraging, mm -hmm. but it makes my heart happy, you know, because you go, yeah, there are good people out there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, because I'm a believer that you got to support everybody. Right. You, you don't have the luxury to say, well, that's too bad, brother. Right, 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 right. Right. You know, that that because you never know when you will need Absolutely. it. Absolutely. You got to build that community. Yeah. So then you went from post. Mm -hmm. You figured post out. Mm -hmm. And then you went into the devil's den. Yes, I did. I went to hell. Yeah. <laughs> so, so tell me what that process of distribution was like for you. You got to do a lot of homework. You know, and a lot of good filmmakers and a lot of good films really never see the light of day, you know, because of that aspect. Mm -hmm. Again, I'd like to say it's important for you to know who you hit your wagon to. It's important to know who the players are. Mm -hmm. And that's why legal and uh, agency representation is, is of the utmost importance. You know, you have to have a great attorney or a great representation or a great producer's rep to really make sure that you and your project ever see the light of day. Mm -hmm. That was one of the key things that I learned uh, as far as distribution it goes. I'm better for it, mm -hmm. you know, having gone through the process um, and, and talk to different people who have gone through the process. Get knowledge from them. To what you were speaking about earlier as far as the community is concerned, the film community, the cowboy community, one of the things that I learned when I came into the business, which pretty much kind of spoiled me mm -hmm. at a very young age, is that on Book of Numbers, I was surrounded by filmmakers of color. I was surrounded by an African-American crew as well as a cast. And so, you know, at 13, I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be great. It's all like this. Yeah, yeah. You know, for the rest of my life. And uh, got to Hollywood, and it wasn't, you know. So you have to find good people yes. that are willing to share that information yes. and that knowledge. Yes. Again, you know, to your point, so that uh, you won't become obsolete or ignorant to the right. game. Right. Again, you know, I was always able to take that spirit with me, you know, from, from when I was 13 throughout the, the, the arc of my career. I wanted to really help people. It's not a black issue, a white issue, a Latin issue. It's just about money. And you may get on some projects where most of the crew and stuff is white, and they're fantastic. Mm -hmm. And you could get on sets where it's all run by mm -hmm. somebody of color, and mm -hmm. they are <laughs> And so it's not really yeah, yeah, a color yeah, thing. Yeah, it yeah. becomes a money thing, right. and it becomes a... a An efficiency a, thing. Yes. And it becomes about how people talk to people that are working for mm -hmm. them. You know, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day is, I want to be with an employer who's going to acknowledge me. And who's going to say, that you. was a great job. Yeah. Thank you so much. Not somebody say, look, this is costing money. You better hurry up. <laughs> or make you... That sounds like you really experienced that. No, before. I have not. <laughs> and, or or they, they, they run you ragged and then give you a blank timesheet. Or check. Well, see, we, we just got to a timesheet, and then when I figured out what that was about, I said, I ain't signing that until you exactly. fill it out, because <laughs> that's not how it is. That's not what we negotiated. That's not, yeah, I'm from New York. You right. got me once, and that's that right. was on that was on me, yeah. but now it's on you, yeah, and you will yeah, pay yeah. me. And I think it's important for filmmakers, mm -hmm. um, the artistic community, when you are trying to do a project, it doesn't matter how much money the project is. It's taking care of your people. Absolutely. Just appreciating what they do for you. Yeah. And it's like, you know, I can make a project with $5. Mm -hmm. It's not whether I did it for $5 or not. It's how did I treat the people? Will they come back and work with me? Mm -hmm. Or did I just burn that bridge? I got the project, but now I can never go back to that group of people mm -hmm. because I was such a mm -hmm. that I worked with will work with me again. Right, right. And right. so as a producer, I think it's important that you learn to really vet people mm -hmm. so that the community that you are pulling from, you're pulling from people who are not only competent, but that they elevate a life on the set. No doubt. Because no you're doubt. spending so many hours on yeah. a set with people. And, and you could have the most talented people, but their personality is... Horrific, mm -hmm. and one person contam can contaminate the whole crew. And if you don't get that person in time, you got mutiny. Right, 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 right. I I remember a project. I won't call names, 
But uh, back in the 80s, I was on a project, and there was an African-American director <clears throat> who was uh, on the show. We were shooting in Nebraska. Basically, one of the crew members was talking some smack behind the director's back, and he was within earshot. And I learned this at a very early age, you know, and he's a brilliant director, by the way who I admire to this day. And he was like, get him a ticket, he's out. I mean, he immediately got him off the set and sent him home. You know, he was not going to allow him to mm -hmm. take this set. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it's important that you uh, surround yourself with like-minded individuals mm -hmm. who get your vision. We're two actors who have done the producing thing. There are so many more opportunities today for filmmakers mm -hmm. than were available when we started. Mm -hmm. You know, because you couldn't do a project unless you raised a half a million dollars yeah. or even in addition to what you're saying if you even thought about becoming a filmmaker a producer or or director you know you, you were arrogant it's like the nerve of you mm. to think that you can go and play mm. in this arena over here where the real money is you know we had to break down a lot of barriers you robert and everybody else included you know that was coming up back in the day and it's just a testament to you know where our hearts were yes and, and what we were really trying to fulfill at the time. well when you love something you're going to see it through no matter what the yeah. pain is yeah. right because this is not an area that people really study mm -hmm. you know they work so hard to get the film made mm -hmm. and then they're like okay i'm just going to get distribution and and they don't understand all that goes into distribution and the playing field has changed it it has changed enormously Mm -hmm. since we started in the past it used to be you would sell a film to a distributor or a studio if you made it mm -hmm. and then they would take it over you would get paid and then they would take care of the residuals and right. take care of all the <coughs> union stuff it's not like that anymore right. they may take the film from you and give you two dollars and then say now you got to pay residuals <laughs> what yeah you just only gave me two dollars residuals right, right, are right. like five what are you talking about? Right. And so there are all these little pieces in distribution that filmmakers are not aware of, or they'll take your piece and then they'll add costs and add costs and add costs. Mm -hmm. So you get the the statement every month and right. you keep owing them. Right. Well, we, you know, it costs us this. And so it, it is important for filmmakers to know before you take your piece to a distributor, see if you could self-distribute it yourself. The, the beauty of where we are at this time is that you can get a website and mm -hmm. sell your product on your website, you can get a Shopify account, sell your product, you can pay. Market it. That's right, you can pay a company. They have these companies now that will take your project to Amazon and, mm -hmm. and iTunes and different places mm -hmm. so that you get a percentage. There's no middleman. Right. You right. you at least get paid. Right. You know, it, it, if you do the marketing and if you do the advertising mm -hmm. and stuff, but it is a, a whole thing. And also filmmakers, when they do their budget, and I learned this the hard way, when you do your budget, you must also budget for marketing mm -hmm. and advertising. Absolutely. And for, and if you're going to run it in a theater, you need to know what that cost is. Mm -hmm. You know, that it costs maybe between 12 and 20 grand to put a film in a theater for just one week. Mm -hmm. That's it. They, yeah. You pay them, and then whatever tickets you sell, then they give you. But you have to pay them, and then you have to bring the product in a DCP or however right, they right, want right, it right. done and give it to them. And filmmakers are about creating, mm -hmm. but then there's that business aspect that gets them in trouble. Right, right, so, right, right. And even, you know, on the... Uh, oh, I'm hot. I'm so hot talking about this. <laughs> Even on the independent uh, film festival circuit, you know, you've got to have budgets to be able to fly your actors out to different screenings and premieres and press junkets, things of that nature. So, you know, that's all the things that, that need to be considered when you're putting together a uh, budget as well. And don't forget a press person. Because right. you have to have a PR company mm -hmm. helping right. to promote that. Out of what we were talking about, is, is there anything that you want to contribute to that whole distribution process or what you would tell people to stay away from? or I know that you mentioned the agent mm -hmm. and the lawyer mm -hmm. are paramount in this. Essential. They can make or break a deal. 
depending on who you have representing you. In addition to that, make sure that you constantly stay involved with the process of distribution. So many filmmakers will sit back and hand their project over to a distributor thinking that they're going to take care of them and have the same type of enthusiasm about their project that they do, and they don't. It's just that something. They don't, really? They don't. <laughs> 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 so you have to keep them accountable every step of the way. Even if you become a nuisance, it's your project. You've spent time with that project for years. Stay involved with your project. I don't know anything project. about being a nuisance. Well, I don't know about that. No, uh, not you, Lydia. Not me. <laughs> me either. No, but I, you know what? That's what makes a great producer. You know, you are definitely the engine, you know, that keeps your project moving forward. So it's important that, that you stay involved and to the extent that you may rub some people the wrong way, but you have got to make sure that your project gets the visibility and the opportunities that it deserves. Right. And, and I think it's important that you realize this is your job and you're doing your job and keep your dignity. Right. You know, and, and be respectful Absolutely. of people. But know how to debate. Mm -hmm. You don't want to argue, but you do want to. You do want to be able to debate and make your case, mm -hmm. and walk away still being uh, friendly. Maybe not friends, but <laughs> you know that that you left it without blowing up a bridge. Right, right, right. Because the thing to remember in show business is that it's tiny. Mm -hmm. You're gonna run into those people all the time, right, right. unless they owe you money. <laughs> well, you're still going to run into them. Yeah. They'll, they, yeah. they'll give you a face like, I right, don't see them. Right, I right, don't see right. them. But it, it's really important to know that show business is a very small community. community. There used to be this thing that, you know, six degrees of separation from Kevin, Kevin Bacon. Bacon. Right, right. I say it's only two degrees right. that I can pick up the phone and call so and so, and they know, they know Kevin Bacon. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, it's really that small. Uh, especially the black community, mm -hmm. the Latin community, and the Asian community, mm -hmm. they're really tiny. Right, right. You know, and you could say whatever you want about us not getting as many opportunities, mm -hmm. but the reality is because it's just a small bunch of us, you know, you get through the gate, mm -hmm. you're in. Unless you do something really stupid right. and blow up a bridge and right, then, right, you know, right, right. then you're not in no more. But for the most part, what I have found in my years, mm -hmm. the good thing is that I'd rather be a woman of color than be a blonde woman mm -hmm. because there's too many of them. Mm -hmm. So they really don't have that many opportunities. No, really. I don't know about you, but when I was in act, going to acting class, I was usually the only per woman of color right, there. Right, right. And there were all these blonde, beautiful young girls, and I was like, they don't stand a chance. Hey, I like to tell people, just stay in your lane. Yes. And do you make whatever you do the it thing. Yes. Whatever that is. Yes. You know, it's, it's, again, it's about staying committed to not only the craft, but to your brand and creating your brand, whatever that may be. And not letting anybody else label you another brand. Because as an actor, you have to know you're the one who decides what you sell. Because mm -hmm. you're the one that has to go in there and sell it. Right. I could talk to you and, all and Let me day. just say this, too. Yes. One of the interesting things about you know, filmmaking and being an actor and a filmmaker is that at the end of the day, if a project is good or bad, it's not often that the filmmakers behind the scene actually get the credit for it. It relies heavily on the actor. Make sure, again, whatever your, your goals are in terms of the type of work that you want to do, the types of material that you'd like to develop, that uh, you are sending the right message and it's something that you can stand behind and be proud of. Well, thank you so much for joining us. If you enjoyed the conversation and even if you you didn't leave us a comment let us know what you think about it and if you want to know more about reggie reginald t dorsey please go to the links below all of his information will be there if you need a a producer an actor a director he's your man thank you so much for joining us remember to subscribe if you haven't already and hit the notification bell so that you can get all the information in real time peace